Hello everybody, so I had a question, a comment actually, on one of my videos uh, about the CL underscore SALV underscore table, which is a great way to display data quickly using an ALV table using object-oriented methods. So the commenter had three questions they wanted to ask. They said, number one, I want to create a custom button on the application toolbar and execute that button in my program. Number two, they asked how to make an ALV cell interactive. I'm assuming this means that you guys want to like double click on a cell and then have an event that gets triggered. Um, if you, you meant something else, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll make a video on that too. And then number three, how to edit the cell of a column. Well, it's not possible with the CL underscore SALV underscore table class. You're actually going to need to use the CL GUI uh, ALV table class for that and you're going to need to use dialog programming module programming module pool programming which I'm going to make a video series on very shortly so stay tuned for that but as for the CL underscore SALV underscore table class unless you guys have some really crazy dynamic programming with some maybe runtime type inference stuff going on there's not to my knowledge any way to accomplish this so this video isn't going to isn't going to go over this. I'm sure somebody has it out there on YouTube or you know some other resource. So do check that out, but we're not going to look at number 3 in this video because it would be far too complex for the scope of this video. So number 1, we need to create a custom button on the application toolbar and execute it. So if you're using the full screen CLSALV table class, you can't use this rather tempting function and I I've, I've already written some boilerplate code here guys. I've just said I've got a table referencing CLSALV table. The events from that table, which is of this type, uh, table SPFLI, inter uh, internal table S GT SPFLI, which is going to hold flight schedule data. Um, GS SPFLI, I actually can get rid of that, not going to use it. Uh, a structure for GT SPFLI, which I also don't think, I yeah, I use that, so I'll keep that. This is a uh, event handler class we're not going to look at right now because I'm going to explain that in further detail later. So in my program, ignore the rest of everything you've just seen. At the selection screen, actually we'll just say start of selection because we're technically not at a selection screen here. I don't have any parameters to this program. So we'll say start of selection. I am creating an ALV display, assigning it to this reference variable table that I created above. Um, if you don't know how to do this and this boggles your mind, I have videos on CLSALV table that I've previously done, so go watch those. But in order to do our custom button, we have to create a GUI status. So in module pool programming, you could call a really a really fun function called add function, which would let you do this, you know, via the code and not necessarily via this custom GUI status. So if you create your program, you can create it in SE38 if you wish. Or you could do it in SE80, which is the way I recommend. This is the SE80 screen right here, the SE80 transaction. From this, we're going to select program, type in our program name here, ZALV Advanced. We double click it, we get the source code. And then you're going to right click, create GUI status. I've already created one here, I'm just called it Z status. So what we're going to do, we're going to go in our status that we've created. If you need me to walk you through this, guys, I can do that too in a separate video, specifically on GUI statuses. I've created a function code called button, and I've assigned it an icon. I'll just create another one called change. So I got view and change. It's going to be static text. The function text is going to be change. Info text is going to be change item. Icon name, I'll just call it icon change, which is an icon that's built into SAP. It's going to ask us for a shortcut key. We can select one or choose not to. So I got view and change already created here. We have to activate our GUI status separately, so I'll go ahead and do that now. I'll go back to my program. I see that on my table reference, I'm calling a method set screen status. What set screen status does is it takes in three different parameters. This is optional if you're going to have it set to all. You don't even need it. I'll keep it there for now just so you guys can see how to use this set functions uh, parameter. We're going to set our actual PF status, our GUI status, which we've defined over here in our object browser. We have the report ID. So this is just saying what report should we use this set this status in. 
That's why our EP ID is the current report ID. So nine times out of 10, this is what you're gonna pass for this parameter. So what that's gonna do is when we run our report, we see our two custom toolbar buttons here. We see view some detail, change item. So that's cool. So how do we go about handling? There's another question I had on there. Create custom button on application toolbar and execute. So we need to set, we need to get our events actually first. This is the, um, I believe I defined it globally. So events type ref to CLSALV events table. We can get that from our table reference and then we set a handler method called added function. Added function is going to take care of the handling for any of our added GUI status. So we need to make a method. It needs to be in a local class or even in a global class if it's going to be static, I guess, and you don't need to access any of the variables without passing something there. But we're going to create a class method. So it's just a static method called added method for event added function of CLSALV events table and then its actual parameter ESLV, ESALV function. So how do we come up with this, you might ask? So we go to our event that we're going to get, double click on it. We see it's a reference to CLSALV events table. Double click on that. Click on the events tab. We see our different events that can be raised. One of them being added function. It says control after execution of application divine function, which is what we've done in our GUI status. So if I click on this method, then click parameters, I can see this is the parameter that it's actually going to export ESALV function. So if I go back to my source code, I've created this method definition added function for event added function, which we just saw in our class builder of the class that actually raises that event. And then that's our ESALV function parameter that this class, uh, this class's uh, method gets passed. So now I've actually implemented that further on down here. I've said method added function. All I'm doing is message and saying ESALV function, which is the added functions function code that gets passed to this method call of type information. So if I execute my class, I see here I have two of these added functions. If I click on the first one, it says view. That's where I had that message call. Click on the second one, it says change. So that right there, guys, kind of takes care of how to make an ALV cell interactive. You could, uh, let's see, you see exit here. I'm actually, I didn't uh, define what to do for exit. So <laughs> it's just going to show me that added function. So let's actually select some data into our table just so I can have something here to show you guys. So I'll say select star from SPFLI into corresponding fields of table GT, I think I just called it GTSPFLI, I did. So now if I execute this report, we'll actually have some data in our internal table here. So we'll get some output. So how do we make a cell interactive, right? So if I double click on this, or this, or this, or this, I need some function to be executed. So we actually set another handler down here I created the method called handle click in my local class for this events. If we look at the events, look at the type, go to the events tab, we see it raises this event called double click and link click. Link click is if a cell is set to a hotspot column and the user clicks on it once, link click method or link click event gets raised so we can handle it that way. Double click gets raised if you double click on any column. So if we take a look at double click, go to the parameters, we can see it raises, or it has these two parameters, row and column. Row is going to be an integer, it's going to be the index of the row that was double clicked in the internal table, so that's very, very useful. Column is going to be a text type uh, data type, it's going to be the column name. So I've actually went ahead and implemented this method in our local class, I said class method, class method handle click for event double click, which we just saw in class builder of our CLSALV events table, importing row column. So I actually have some stuff in here. I'm just going to comment out in this method. And the only thing I'm going to put in this handle click method is message 
row, which should be okay. Message row type I. Oh, well, let's do column. It's complaining because it's an integer type field, so we'll just do message column. Go ahead and activate that and run it. So now if I double click on a column, it's going to message that column name from the actual table. So that's city from, city to. We're going to see this here is our airport to, our connection ID. So we're getting the column name. So now we can say something in the logic like if column ID equals connection ID, give a message saying, well, let's do this. Let's, let's go back to what I had here and I'll tell you what it does. Just paste it in here and I'll explain it. So in our handle click method now, we'll just pretty print this, check it and activate it, make sure everything's okay. So now this handle click method is going to get past this row and column column is going to be the name of the column so if the column is connection ID what we're going to do is read the table GTSPFLI which is the table we use down here when defining our ALV grid at the index of row and the index row is going to be passed from our handle click it's basically going to pass the index value of the currently clicked row of our internal table and then we're going to read the results of that into our structure here, GTSPFL, GSSPFLI, which is just a global structure, just like a line of our internal table. Then we're going to create a message variable. Our message is going to say, you chose con ID, and then read from our structure, the connection ID, and just display it as a message. So now, if we activate this and run it, what we're going to do, we can click on any of these other fields. Nothing's going to happen, but since we said that this connection ID, it's connection number, we said if column name equals connection ID, then read the table into our structure and then from the structure display you chose connection ID XYZ. So if I double click any of these connection IDs, I see you chose connection ID 0789, which is what I double clicked. Let's say 2, you chose connection ID 2. So that just about wraps up how to create a custom button on the application toolbar and execute it and how to make an ALV cell interactive. So again there's our custom buttons here view, change. So that's all handled with our method handle click which listens for the double click event from our ALV and method added function and again method added function listens for custom GUI status, buttons, or you know, uh, menu bar entries up here. So again, Z status, if we double click on it, go to application toolbar, we see view and change. And that was the function code that we got whenever we go back. That was the function code we got whenever we clicked on view and change respectively here. So that sums up those two questions. The third one again was how to do um, Oh shoot, I've already forgotten what it was. It was how to um, make a cell editable, I believe. So we'll again, we'll go over that whenever I make my video here shortly on module pool programming. But that should answer any sort of basic questions you have on custom buttons on ALVs, how to make ALV cells clickable, and you know execute actions based off of that. So if you guys have any further questions, please feel free to leave a comment, and I'll make a video specifically addressing your concern. Thank you so much for watching. Leave me a subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.